anyone here to speak in favor? And in case anybody forgot what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this is to declare surplus and direct the conveyance of the property to 5800 Patterson Avenue to the Indian. Yes, sir. Thank you, Council, for seeing me today. My name is Dante Knight. I am a proud supporter of the Washington Redskins. I also want to thank you, Mr. Hogan, for all that you have done. Today, I will come to you just as a proud fan, but as a senior and student leader at Virginia Commonwealth University. The relocation of the Washington Redskins three-week summer camp has tremendous implications for the city of Richmond, my fellow residents, and my peers. Imagine the revenue generated for local businesses, including restaurants and hotels within the city. Imagine the expansion of the Redskins Coaches in the Classroom program that has already helped inspire and influence high school students at Armstrong and at John Marshall. Imagine the internship opportunities for my peers majoring in sports medicine at BCU. Ladies and gentlemen, we, as the Greater Richmond community, no longer have to imagine. We have the opportunity of making everything we just imagined a reality. When I told my grandfather about this, he said, his breath smelling like halls and chest smelling like a big big room. Son, I remember when many people counted this city out. I'm reminded of the Redskins 1968 game when Sonny Jurgensen led them to the comeback victory over Dallas. By the way, we were 21 and 0. At the, the, the score was 21 and 0. We came back 34 and 31. Go students. <laughs> this is another testament of our comeback as a city. Make sure you remind those good folks at City Hall how important this really is. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I'm uh, Hugh Joyce, and I uh, own and operate a small business that works in and out of the city. And I also own uh, personal property in the city. I was born in the city as well. Uh, but I come here tonight to voice my strong support for the Richmond Redskins and Bronze Forest Partnership. I would hope everyone can lay down the political battle gear for a moment and consider the vision the macro plan, a vibrant city with the best of everything, amazing art, powerful amateur sports, powerful professional sports, great business operations, people in government working together, and a highly desirable lifestyle. Great cities don't happen without great vision and leadership and risk. And I congratulate you all for, for getting us to this point getting us close to approving uh, East Road measure that makes the deal become uh, complete. I support our mayor and the governor who worked hard to get the plan of the training camp to Richmond. And some may say, Hugh, you've got a dog in the hunt. You know, you just want to make money. And I would answer, I'll be okay whether the Redskins come or not. And I love them and I want them here. Big time. But that's not why I feel so strongly about having to come to town. Uh, it's because I love Richmond, and I believe we deserve to have them here. Our city needs this excitement. The package is right for our river city. And I think it will have immeasurable value. I think the value will be significantly greater than all the numbers that we're talking about when you look at all of the aspects for our city. Now, I'm also sure there are other people that would love to have them and would jump on it, should we waver, which I hope we will not. I encourage council to have the vision and will to approve this thrilling development opportunity for our city. So please vote yes on all of these so we can hail the Redskins in Richmond, Virginia. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm Sean McLean. I own a restaurant in the museum district called Bandito's. I'm not going to say where. 
Um, I heard a lot of arguments against it. A lot of it makes sense. These people got a reason to say what they're saying. Um, of course, Sullivan Persinger is the best Woody Allen that I've ever seen in my life. Mr. Sports here, I love him, but I'm just kidding. But for me, it's this. I own the restaurant, yes. I think it will be very good for my restaurant, for other restaurants, for hotels, for gas stations, for anybody who has any kind of business around town. I think it's undeniably going to be good. It happens every year during a crappy time of year when there's only nothing going on in July, August, whatever it is. I mean, I guess July. That's great for us. Who, who can deny that? And beyond that, this is sort of like sentimental, but of course I'm a Redskin fan. I'm a Redskin fan 46 years. I mean, I the wool, love it, and uh, grow it. It's all good. But um, when I was a kid in Virginia Beach, names like Frostburg and Carlisle and Ashburn were these mythical places I'd never seen or ever, never probably ever going to have. They seemed like sleepy little towns that all of a sudden came alive when Redskins came to town to do their, you know, their, their summer camp. And it just seemed really exciting, really cool, and I thought how neat it would be to go be around it. I've got a six-year-old boy, and I'm really excited about the idea of my little boy seeing everything I didn't see, worshiping these guys on TV from afar. I say the word worship loosely. I mean, I loved, I loved the gladiator of the sport. I loved the, the you know, back in your teens through thick and thin. My kid's going, I'm brainwashing him right now real hard. Uh, he's got no choice in the matter, obviously. And I will say that this whole area is chock full of Redskins fans for hundreds of miles. Anybody here who says, I don't really think it's going to make any difference on tourism. It's ridiculous. It's going to bring people here. Everybody with kids is going to come see the Redskins. They think they're going to see RG3. Forget everybody else. RG3. <laughs> the greatest football player in the NFL in a very long time. Bottom line is it's going to be good for the economic boom. It's going to be an economic boom in a bad time of the year for small businesses in the area. And like I say, in some way, it's going to be memories for families and kids growing up with it that you can't put a price tag on. It's a morale thing. It's going to be, it's, it's happening around town for those few weeks of the summer that's really going to be what everybody's talking about. It's going to be like with these humans basketball games, all of a sudden everybody becomes best friends. Well, it's going to be like that right for three weeks in July. And that's all I have to say about that is I root for the skins, I root for coming here, and thanks for your time. Thank you, sir. Good evening, uh, Madam President, uh, members of the City Council. I'm John Lovebill, uh, representing the sports backers, and uh, really this is this is part of a uh, greater sports tourism effort. Uh, as many of you know, the sports backers, we have a com complete plan to work on sports tourism. We own events. We partner with events at the Convention Center. We have sports tourism grants that we provide to over 20 different community organizations and over 25 different sporting events in the community. In total, we have a very comprehensive sports tourism effort in this region. One of the things that uh, was actually mentioned by the last speaker, which kind of sets me up perfectly, is that July and August are very slow times in our area of hotels. They also are tough times to have sporting events that bring a lot of visitors to town because it is hot here. And so it, it makes a lot of sense for us, from a sports tourism standpoint, the dollars they bring to have a residence at that time of year. If, we were, if they were coming at a time when we already have full hotel rooms, then that doesn't do us the good that it does in July and August. So, so that's incremental business that's going to help the bottom line. The other big fact that the sports backers are working on is how to use sports tourism to leverage to make our community more physically active. Sports has a unique opportunity in that sense to grab people's attention and motivate them and inspire them to be more physically active. And certainly the Redskins through their Play 60 program and what their players and coaches can bring, not only when they're here for those three weeks, but through the rest of the year and partnerships that can be created. But also with Bon Secours. And Bon Secours is a, a huge community act, a partner for making this community more active. They've shown their, their willingness to work to improve the health of our community in a lot of different ways, and their recognition of the importance of the fight on childhood obesity and the need for our children to be more physically active shows that these are two great partners coming together to help us uh, have something even greater than we would have had otherwise. So again, I uh, encourage you to support this, this uh, great opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, John. Good evening. My name is Matthew Shaw, members of council. Thank you for your time. 
on this transaction any time this evening. I look close to the West Hampton School and I'm admittedly concerned about the potential impact of the rezoning of the West Hampton School and its possible effect on other blocks of Havisham Avenue. However, I am wholeheartedly in favor of this transaction. Bones Cure is contributing $6.3 million to the Redskins Training Camp Facility, $8.5 million to expand Richmond Community Hospital in a country where we're up in arms over job creation. Over 200 jobs will be created through this transaction in various parts of the city. Bones Cure is committed to working with the city and local residents on the design of the West Hampton building and they pledge to look to use local developers. Other potential uses of the site might include less desirable structures, such as drug stores and convenience stores. The playing fields will be preserved at the West Hampton School. Bones Cure will be, play, will be paying a significant amount of real estate taxes. The presence of the Redskins will be highly beneficial to local businesses particularly those in the Boulevard Corridor. Training camp fields will be available for local use much of the year. The city is not spending any public dollars to relocate the training camp. This is a good deal for the city through the creation of over 200 jobs, total private sector investment of over $40 million spread across different areas of the city. The city is not spending public money. Richmond has the opportunity to bring one of the most valuable brands and sports to the town. I'm in favor of this deal. Hail the Redskins. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Madam President and members of City Council. My name is Lynette Matera, and I'm a resident of the City of Richmond. Um, nobody can ever say that the citizens of Richmond are apathetic. I have been heartened by the, <laughs> by the debate that I've heard tonight. Um, I come here to ask for your support of this series of, of resolutions. No real estate deal is ever perfect. Nobody ever gets everything they want. But it's also rare, in my opinion, and I, please excuse the pun here, um, that, as, that the city can really have a touchdown on a deal such as this, where not only do we have jobs, we have um, the economic investment, we have the economic benefit of increased tourism, and we also have a renewed and enhanced focus on on health services, especially in the East End. Um, I've worked in that area of the city for a long time, um, and it desperately needs jobs, and it desperately needs um, the economic development activity balance for this brand. So I ask you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the President, City Council, my name is Chris Caldwell, and I grew up in Metro Richmond, and then I studied economics at BCU. And although I may not be pro Redskins on Sunday, I am pro Redskins coming to Richmond. Uh, you know, one thing I've learned in economics is that you, know, you don't make money off a building just sitting there. And having a school sit vacant for three years, or losing money every year just in depreciation. And to get a deal where we gain 4.5 million, you know, thank you Councilman Hilbert for that plan, uh, that goes towards public schools, it's a great deal. And I'm pro of this plan just because it brings in more than 120 jobs that I would get. You get you know, tourism that will just boost all the local restaurants around Richmond and strengthen our ties to all the Redskins fans across the streets, Commonwealth. Uh, I think that we just, we need to go forward with this plan. You know, change can be scary, you know, because it's different. But I believe, you know, taking our due diligence, taking it one step at a time like we're doing here, is the right way to go about this. Hail to the Redskins. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Richard Johnson. I'm chairman of the Economic Development Authority and a citizen of the Fourth District. Um, I'm president of the council. Um, I, uh, as I showed previously, the Economic Development Authority has unanimously, with all members present, endorsed this transaction before. Uh, the issues that we've been vetting over the past two weeks have been worked on very thoroughly. 
think what we need to do, if, if I may be so bold as to both invite you and encourage you to join the Economic Development Authority Board, and there's nothing that we can do uh, together that would be any more of a thank you and an encouragement to Bob's Accords for all they've done in the past and that they continue to do what they propose to, as well as the Redskins, for all they have done and all they're going to bring to us than to have your board, your council, join our board and have a unanimous recommendation, a unanimous vote on this tonight. I hope that will come. I trust it will pass. I hope it will pass unanimously and send a message not only to these two fan groups, but to all the citizens of Richmond that you folks have done your homework, for sure you have, and that you've made the right decision, you've made a great decision, and it's going to result in a great outcome for the citizens and uh, a great uh, benefit for the future of the city. Thank you. Thank you. You forgot to say y'all for the Redskins. <laughs> y'all for the Redskins. All right. Hello, members of council. My name is Matthew Davey. Um, I live at 5900 Patterson Avenue in the Chalet, right across the street from the West Haven School. Um, I grew up in the first district. I went to Mary Mumford Elementary School. Um, my father taught me how to play soccer, well, tried to, at the West Hampton School soccer field. Um, I, I'm very heavily in favor for this, as long as Bon Secours keeps the fields intact and its, it's historic value. Um, I do believe that tourism and promoting um, healthy wellness in the community is definitely needed all throughout the city and in the first district. Um, if there's Anything that, that needs to be done, that's definitely something that would help uh, more revenue for the city to spend it on things like education and transportation. Um, if anybody doesn't see that, then I don't know what I'm standing here for. Um, but I, I know that tourism is a very big asset to the city of Richmond, and any time we, we can have to capitalize on it, we should, we should take it to, uh, again, pay for education and transportation. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. All right, after those comments, I'm going to bring this back to council for discussion.